Dear Prime Minister, Saturday, January the 28th marks 35 years since the Supreme Court of Canada handed down a decision that has impacted and continues to impact the lives of millions of Canadians. In the 1988 R.V. Morgenthaler decision, our country's top court throughout the previous 1969 abortion law put in place by your father, Pierre Elliott Trudeau, deeming it unconstitutional, quote unquote. The majority opinion was that the procedural requirements for an abort abortion violated a woman's charter right to, quote, security of the person, end quote, though two of the seven justices dissented. The court established no right to abortion, a point acknowledged not only by legal professionals, but mainstream media. Last year, the CBC ran a report about the Morgenthaler decision titled, Why Canada's Roe v. Wade Didn't Enshrine Abortion as a Right. The ruling, which was rife with faults, effectively removing or removed every obstacle bar barring pregnant mothers from obtaining an abortion. This allowed mothers to kill their preborn children at any stage during the pregnancy for any reason at all. And sadly, millions of Canadian mothers have chosen to destroy the new human lives growing and developing inside of them. Pause for a moment to consider that over three million precious children, boys and girls, have been eliminated by abortion since this decision. The destruction of every one of these children is a tragic loss for their families, their communities, the whole country. Each one was beautifully and wonderfully made by God. Each came into existence to love and needing to be loved. Each had unique talents and gifts to share with others. Each had the power to dream, to create, to change the world. As a full member of the human family, each had an inalienable dignity and each was endowed with human rights, including the right to life. Abortion violence cut their lives short, stripping them of all they had to offer, all they had to contribute. It stripped them of their futures, their opportunities, their dreams. They were never given the chance to go to school, to become a scientist, doctor, or musician, to help build up this country, making it a better place to live. The Supreme Court justices did not want the Canada we live in today when it comes to abortion. In fact, The court was unanimous in finding that the state has an interest in protecting the lives of humans in the womb. Chief Justice Dixon, with Justice Lamer concurring, wrote, Like Beats and Wilson, J.J., I agree that protection of fetal interests by Parliament is also a valid governmental objective. Justice Beats, with Justice Esty concurring, wrote that the primary objective of the Criminal Code Section 251, which was repealed, was the protection of the fetus. The primary objective does relate to concerns which are pressing and substantial in a free and democratic society and which, pursuant to Section 1 of the Charter, justify reasonable limits to be put on a woman's right to security of the person, they wrote. Beats continued. I am of the view that the protection of the fetus is and, as the Court of Appeal observed, always has been a valid objective in Canadian criminal law. I think Section 1 of the Charter authorizes reasonable limits to be put on a woman's right having regard to the state interest in the protection of the fetus. Issuing a dissenting opinion, Justice McIntyre and LaForest wrote, quote, historically, there has always been a clear recognition of a public interest in the protection of the unborn, end quote. The majority opinion concluded that the solution 
to the abortion question, namely how to balance the rights of the mother with the state's interest in protecting life in the womb, must be left to Parliament, since Parliament, the court stated, is elected for that purpose in a free democracy. Prime Minister, Par Prime Minister, Parliament has yet to honor the Supreme Court's invitation that it pass legislation protecting life in the womb, though some flawed attempts have been made. Science has refutably proven that human life begins at fertilization. Medical technology has opened a window to the womb, showing beyond a shadow of a doubt that the new life in the womb is a human life with a body different from the mother's body, a tiny person with unique DNA and fingerprints, a someone whom all of us have a responsibility to care for. Prime Minister, I call upon you and Parliament to follow the invitation of the Supreme Court and pass legislation protecting children in the womb. Such legislation must reflect what science and medical advancements reveal to us about life in the womb, namely that it is a fully human life. Such legislation, if it is to be if it is to truly remedy the current wrongs suffered by preborn humans, must restore their legal protection from the first moment of existence. It has been said that a nation will be judged by how it treats its most vulnerable members. Prime Minister, I present to you the preborn human child, the most vulnerable among us. These smallest members of the human family are waiting on you and on Parliament to act on their behalf. I ask you, please, stand up for them. God bless you and God bless Canada.